In this webcast, I'm going to introduce you to the three mechanistic pathways for acyl substitution. These three mechanisms are operative under different reaction conditions, and in just a moment, we'll talk about their differences. I'd like to begin, however, by talking about their similarities. In each of these three pathways, very early on, if not the first step, is an AD sub N step, the nucleophile addition to a polarized pi bond step. We learned about that when we talked about addition reactions to carbonyls. The AD sub N step transforms the sp2 hybridized carbonyl carbon into an sp3 tetrahedral carbon. And because of the tetrahedral geometry, we call this the tetrahedral intermediate, or TI for short. Somewhere subsequent to the formation of the tetrahedral intermediate is going to be a beta elimination step. And that's going to return that sp3 hybridized carbonyl carbon of the tetrahedral intermediate back to an sp2 hybridized carbon. It's also going to cause the leaving group to leave in the beta elimination step. We've encountered the beta elimination step once before. We saw it when we talked about the E1CB mechanism. But now we see it in a slightly different context in which rather than creating a carbon-carbon double bond as we did in the E1CB mechanism, we're creating a carbon-oxygen double bond. So let's return to that fundamental elementary step and examine it in a little bit more detail. The beta elimination that you see in this first step is what we talked about when we talked about the E1CB mechanism. A lone pair on this carb anion is going to donate into the sigma star of the leaving group in a pi type fashion to create the new carbon carbon double bond. E beta involves pi bond making and sigma bond breaking. Very similarly, the variation that we're going to need for acyl substitution replaces that lone pair on the carbon with a lone pair on some heteroatom Z. In a similar way, there's going to be an N to sigma star pi type interaction that will create a new pi bond, and the leaving group will leave. Let me point out a couple of features about this generalized beta elimination elementary step. Typically, the heteroatom Z is oxygen, as it would be in the case of a carbonyl, but we'll also encounter cases where that heteroatom is in nitrogen. The second thing I'd like to point out is the expanded list of leaving groups. When we talked about D sub N, that leaving group list was short. The leaving group had to be a relatively weak base in order to be a suitable leaving group for D sub N. But that is not the case for the beta elimination step. As an example, this leaving group could even be hydroxide for beta elimination. It would never be a suitable leaving group for D sub N, but hydroxide is capable of being eliminated by this beta elimination step. So recognize that there's an expanded list of leaving groups that can participate in beta elimination. Now let's take a look at those three mechanistic pathways and decide under which conditions they're operative. Under basic conditions, the simplest pathway is operative. That's the pathway that involves just a two-step sequence, AD sub N to generate the tetrahedral intermediate followed by the beta elimination step. This takes place generally under basic conditions, and you can see that we always have negatively charged intermediates. Under neutral conditions, that's the middle pathway here. Usually, a neutral nucleophile will add in in the AD sub N step and make what's known as a sphiterionic tetrahedral intermediate. It's sphiterionic because there are both positive and negative charges around. Now a base, which sometimes can be the nucleophile itself, will come in and remove a proton from that nucleophilic species to generate the neut neutral nucleophile. Beta elimination will take place next, kicking out the leaving group, doing a net substitution at the carbonyl carbon. This third pathway is operative under acidic conditions, and you can see that the first thing that happens is protonating the carbonyl carbon to make it a better electrophile. Once that better electrophile has been created, a poorer nucleophile can now add in by the AD sub N step. That nucleophile is going to carry a positive charge, and what I show next is a proton transfer step. I show it as an intramolecular pathway, which basically would mean that the curved arrows are going to look something like this. The leaving group is going to pick up the proton, 
and the nucleophile will become neutral, as you can see here. At this point, the leaving group is ready to be eliminated in the beta elimination step, and that regenerates the protonated carbonyl. Loss of that proton gives us the substitution product. This last pathway generally takes place under acidic conditions. In the next webcast, we're going to take a look at some actual examples that follow these mechanistic pathways.